Christopher Ree once said, so many of our dreams at first seem impossible, then they seem improbable, and then when we summon the will, they soon become inevitable. Our next story follows a young man who risked his life to prove those words are true. I just love it. It's amazing. So many wonderful things. It's kind of where God shows off. This is how Matt Johnston envisions the world beneath the sea, a place he's never visited, but has dreamed about all his life. From the time he was four or five years old, drawing fish and talking about them, anything to do with, with uh, sea life and stuff, he always had an interest in it. An unusual passion for a Minnesota boy raised five states from the nearest ocean. But Matt's hopes of exploring the deep crumbled when in grade school, his body began to fail him. He couldn't run or jump like the other kids. He would fall down for no reason. When you heard the doctor say your son has muscular dystrophy, mm -hmm. you knew what it meant. Oh yeah, yeah. I was totally devastated. Um, Matt has uh, Duchenne, which is more common among boys. and. They don't generally live very long. Knowing that must have been hard. Oh, yeah. I mean, how, how can you fit a lifetime in, what, a week, a month, a year? By seven, Matt couldn't take another step. Finally, one day, he looked up at me and said, I can't walk anymore. I'm tired. When he was 17, his respiratory system shut down altogether. Minutes away from losing his life, doctors performed an emergency tracheotomy. He would never breathe on his own again. You want it cold, you sure? Yeah, it's good now. All right. Over the past decade, Matt has become a prisoner in his own body. Today, yeah. at 29, all he can move are his thumbs. Yeah. You can't open your mouth as wide as you used to. You gotta do smaller bites. His parents are divorced, and he lives with his father, Charlie, who now works from home and is trained to be Matt's primary caregiver. You get up a lot. Yeah. Every night, how many times? Oh, a uh, minimum of four or five times, uh, sometimes every hour on the hour. Just to move him? Just shift his hips, uh, move his elbow slightly. To keep his son breathing, to keep him alive. If I him, I went to eat. I probably would have died a long time ago. How long does someone live? with Duchenne's Well, you just get about 30. I'm going to be 30 on January 12th this year. Does knowing that death is coming so soon, does it teach you something about living? Tell me you got to live your life the best you can. Enjoy it. It's not going to last that long. You know? I'm coming to get you, Matt. Come and get me. With time running out and little to lose, Matt decided to follow through with his childhood dream. So I'm going to scuba dive. It's like, yeah, I can't you do something simpler like learn to fly a kite or something, you know? Well, it began with a few emails, some phone calls, and soon the Johnson household was dive central. My God, I got two lines and cell phone and fax number, and those numbers were ringing all the time. It's not for us, it's for him. There's so many things you can choose. Why yeah. scuba diving? Yes, I, I don't like easy. I like, I like breaking the windows. People say you can't do something. I like to prove them wrong. You know? Has anyone with muscular dystrophy in the state you're in been able to do a scuba dive? No. The first. I think he kind of had to sell me a little bit. So, and he did. He did a very good job of selling me on the idea that he could learn how to scuba dive. Yeah, that's perfect. With the coach on board, a dive company agreed to build Matt a prototype, a suit that would accommodate all of his breathing tubes. The next challenge, Matt hadn't been in the water for over a decade. I mean, I got the vent, it kind of, you know, it kind of made me nervous of water, you know. I took a shower at a free call. They started small, just learning how to be in the water again. What's that? Good? You could tell he was really nervous. I was a, uh, totally on pins and needles. But we were in the water about less than a minute, and all of a sudden you look over and you could just see it melt right off his face. I guess getting back in the water was like a relief. 
It was like the first time I feel great in 11 years. Weight loss. We're good? Okay, we're going to float then. His first open water experience came in a muddy lake, but with that success, and after three years of training, he was ready for his master plan. They would leave Minnesota and head to the Florida Keys to hit the ocean. What you're about to do is very dangerous. Yeah, it's risky. So I was going in the car every day. Yeah, but you don't have to take this risk. No. I guess I have to. I feel like it's a destiny to make it come true, you know? Persistence is his middle name, that's for sure. Matt says he would rather die in a scuba accident than leave this world in some hospital bed. Why don't you say no? It's his life. That's where he wants to, his life to come to a conclusion, is the ocean. I have no right to deny him that. I have a feeling it's going to be better than I ever dreamed it was. It's going to be the most amazing trip I've ever been on in my life. We're going to take you on that trip, and when we come back, m m equipment malfunctions threaten Matt's life. We're going to at the conclusion of Matt Johnson's story. But first, this is Today on NBC. Back now with the conclusion of Matt Johnson's story. He has spent the last three years training for this moment when he can feel free of his wheelchair scuba diving in the open water. Hey guys. It's the morning of his first attempt and members of the dive community from across the country. Okay, that's all right. Once strangers, Coming down. now friends, okay. okay, you ready, kiddo? Are all on hand to help. This is uh, your first time on a dive boat. Yeah, <laughs> and Harley White. Drew, Arr. all right, Frank. Hi, hi, Captain. Matt. Yeah. Uh, they have a, a diver by the name of Matt Johnson on board. Yeah, I'm right here. Let's get out there, yeah. all right? Hey, uh, thanks. Takes Matt three helpers. All right, let's get your arms in there. All right, now the hard one. <laughs> and over an hour to get completely suited up. Let's go, Matt. Thanks, okay, there, Matt. Just watch his head on the ladder. Okay. I got him. Once in the water, Matt needs seemingly endless adjustments to ensure he's sealed tight. Even a small leak could be dire. What's not working? Is your mask leaking? Is it pinching? Just relax. Right, don't be sorry. Technical problems and first time jitters are getting the best of him. Dad sits with the ventilator in his lap, monitoring his son's every breath. Then Matt dips under for just a few seconds when suddenly. Bring him up. Bring him up. Bring him up. Oh, there's something wrong with him. Where's the bag? Where's the bag? Open your eyes. Blink your eyes. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. Give me the bag! Give me the bag! One of his there, tubes has cracked, blocking Matt's air supply. Oh my god. But once he can yeah. breathe again, he's right, okay. We can connect your broke. <laughs> and wants to push on. Back you can over. do this, okay? Dad, I know I can do it. Okay. But after four hours and half a dozen attempts, Matt's just too worn out to continue. Yeah, we're done. I think we gotta be done for the day. <laughs> Tomorrow will be better day. Now I know what to do. We have good days and bad days. Yeah, that's what diving is. Day two. Ready to dive today. Got everything figured out. This is Matt's last chance to make it work. His dad has warned him the strain of yesterday weakened him. Ready, Matt? Yes, give me a second. One, two, three. Ready, Matt? But almost as quickly as he slips in, all his anxiety slips away. Relax, Just relax, enjoy it. It's all worth it, man. Open your eyes, man. I don't want to miss anything. We're good. We're good. All right, he's been down a minute. Two minutes. 
He's working hard, Beth, but it's consistent. Three minutes. Go, Matt, go. This is pretty exciting. More than anything, I don't want him to be disappointed. How long has he been down? Five minutes underwater. Oh, okay, here they come. Here they go, the fish. Almost 10 minutes. It took me a long time to do it, but I did it. You know, some people think I'd be crazy. But I figure all divers are a little bit crazy. I mean, they go underwater where nobody really belongs. 14 minutes. Unreal. Just wanted to uh, let you know, Matt the Aquaman just made a 15 minute dive. How you feel, buddy? Good. How was that? Good. Proud of you, Matt. Yeah, that's fine. Looks good. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Love you. History in the making and a dream fulfilled. That was totally awesome, man. No, totally radical. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful out there, too. Great job, buddy. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do this with all of you guys' help. It's not done here, I got lots of stuff to do yet. That's right. Oh, boy. <laughs> However long yeah. you live, what do you want it to be said of you when you go? I guess a guy I'd like to live his life. To make his dreams come true. The perfect ending to a long road. Yeah. Thanks for bringing me along with your dream. Yeah. Love you, man. It was a real honor to tell that story. And for his next, next adventure, Matt wants to do, dive with great white sharks. His father, <laughs> Charlie, is still hoping he takes up Scrabble instead. Yeah, <laughs> everything in moderation, Matt. But what a great dad he has, too. Very great dad. And I think it's so, there were so many lessons for all of us on so many levels. I want to uh, thank um, Robin Sindler for putting that together, but uh, they're our producer. But I think, you know, the idea of not giving up no matter what, yeah. um, loving your child enough to let him or her live their dreams. I mean, it just, is greatly inspirational. It was a very, very nice story. All right, we're going to have much more ahead on a Thursday morning. But first, this is Today. You go, Matt, on NBC.